Hi there, this is Christian from Spitfire Audio. I'm sharing walkthrough duties with Paul today um, and going to show you through some of the additional material in Albion. There's so much to get through, we've had to dedicate two rooms to walkthroughs. Um, we're looking at uh, the Stevenson Steam Band today, a selection of uh, pads, synths and kind of very interesting um, atmospheres and effects that have been created from the new Albion 1 109-piece orchestra and some other sources. Here's my favourite sound. So if we uh, back up a step, let's have a look at how this is all laid out. So when you open Stevenson Steam Band, you're presented with a bunch of folders. These are basically some kind of loosely categorised presets that have been made for you to quickly load in and, and use and tweak. We we'll also have a couple of dev kits, which are the two vanilla sound banks we um, use to make these sounds, or presets rather. Um, let's just have a quick look in here. Okay, so for the, those of you who are not familiar with uh, Edna, I'll just do a quick uh, briefing, uh, but today it's all about the content, so I'll just, it really will be a brief uh, look through and uh, we're going to have some more demos in-depth tutorials online very soon Okay, so basically you've got the normal um, contact interface at the top and then basically you have two banks of sounds Imagine it like a pair of uh, record decks and you basically can merge these sounds layer them crossfade between them oscillate between them So if we look here, here's a selection of vanilla sounds that we've created warped from this amazing kind of orchestral material uh, to create some really good raw material You'll notice that the load here is, is very big. That's because everything here is loaded in. You simply select what you want and then off you go. Now with the presets, we've basically purged everything that isn't loaded into the two banks. So if you to go purge unused, you'll see it drops down to a more manageable level. But again, it's just great because if you pull up a preset, you like the kind of gate settings, etc., etc. You can actually re-unpurge the sounds to load them all in and maybe select some different sounds of your liking. So at the top here, we've got the two um, uh, banks, and these, this area here, below the banks, um, are just some basic synth kind of um, settings for each bank independently. So some filters, some basic tuning, panning, and ADSR, etc., etc. Moving down from there, you've got your crossfade mixer again, just like a pair of decks from one to another, and then you've got you can oscillate it at different speeds and to different amounts and in different directions. Below that you've got a gate sequencer which again you can change the length of, switch on or off, and you can change some smoothing parameters there. All of this is automatable which is as you'll see later on how we've made some very interesting sounds that not only kind of are interesting when you play them but they kind of uh, morph when you use the modulation wheel. As a side note if you don't get your modulation wheel out on anything Spitfire you're going to be basically not getting 50% of the library especially with the uh, orchestral stuff. And below the gate sequencer is a bunch of uh, effects that we have um, set up on the front here. That's something you can do as well. If you go into a effects you've basically got a bunch of different racks that uh, place effects at different points in the signal path quite simply detach and attach and there you go there's your delays there okay so let's go through some of the uh, presets as I said it's uh, all about the sounds today and let's have a look here so let's start with some epic adventures We've got an amazing 8,000 piece choir. Well, that's what it sounds like to me anyway. I'm guilty for a lot of these patch names. So you can see that the modulation was simply controlling the amount of um, uh, gates that's going in and the gate is a very subtle kind of patterner. We can increase that here to make it a bit more severe. Or indeed you can just disable the gate sequencer and I've also got the modulation wheel mapped to the crossfader.
and we can again make that a little bit more severe. Lovely stuff. Let's move on to another awesome bird. of all my favorites i'd love to play all the sounds but oliver does um these great um playthroughs which actually just go through every sound imagine if you're in a shop going through every preset um so we'll save that uh to go through all the sounds for another time So it's not just kind of crazy stuff. There's a lot of really kind of very, um, you know, useful stuff that's, you know, um, great to mix in with orchestral stuff to give it a kind of a thickness. And obviously some crazy stuff too. You'll see with that one, uh, we've got an automatic oscillation going on here. You can adjust the speed of that here. So it's great for kind of adding waves and also the amount. And the shape as well. Move on to ocean waves, which again I think uses this oscillator to create kind of waves of sound. Or maybe not. Cathedrals, very provocative name. to slow wind. So uh, one of the few pads that contains multiple notes. We try and kind of, uh, we've got a kind of big atonal section, it's got a lot of fun stuff, but we try and keep it to one note. It's very frustrating when you pull up a really lovely synth pad and you can't really kind of work it into your composition because it's got a fifth in it or something like that. Okay, so let's have a look at the atonal adventures. These are very much more kind of sound designy, atmospheric um, stuff. There is some kind of compositional stuff in there, but it's a, it's a lot of fun. I, th I call these great cue starters. You know, you can lay down an atmosphere, put a solo oboe on the top, and it's uh, they work really well. Maybe not on this one. Though. Fire truck in a black hole, which is, I named it because that's what it sounds like to me. Let's move off C minor for now.
trumpets. You can actually really hear where they're derived from, these ones. And then let's um, settle on Whitechapel, which is actually uh, something we've taken from the Legacy Albion, uh, which is a sound. Again, I just lay it down, put a little distant harp on the top, and you've got a track. Awesome sound. Okay, let's go to the hybrid orchestra. Now this is um, an idea that um, someone on VI control, I don't know if you guys have hung out there at all. It's kind of an interesting place to hang out if you want to chat to other composers and stuff. Um, but occasionally um, we get a really good idea from there. And uh, one guy said, you know, can you just get some of the normal orchestral stuff into Edna? So uh, we've done that. And uh, we're really, um, you know, very thankful for the suggestion because it's, it's pretty good stuff. So let's have a listen to some stabs. And again, a bit of fun with the old um, modulation wheel. I'm a big fan of taking orchestral stuff and kind of m messing it around. I think that uh, people treat orchestras with far too much respect musically, and I think it's great to, to have fun with them. We've got some low pit stabs. Again, with some stutter fun on it. And you'll hear that that's actually been layered with a Coligno. <laughs> a little bit of distortion there. I think we're going to have a lot of fun with these. And some woodwind stabs. I love the undertones you get from the low woodwinds. It gives you a real sub bassy. And I don't think you're going to be surprised to hear. No surprises there, I don't think. Okay, so let's move on to the steam drones, which are, as suggested, you know, probably worth starting with a low kind of octave, something like that. Um, we had that great sound uh, there, the sustain thing that I played earlier, which I'm just absolutely, I can't get enough of this. Here's another lovely drone.
There's also some really lovely kind of basic stuff in there as well, but I just wanted to go through some of the fun, fun stuff. Now, um, the next bit is actually the largest um, section. So our kind of Stevenson's pads, which are just a great for building tracks with or cues with, but also because it's based from an organic source, we find it so much easier to mix in with kind of orchestral and solo instruments. It just seems to sit together a lot easier. Um, actually, the last one in the list is my favourite, so I must have hit a stride when I was making these things. So we'll listen to this. favourites in the legacy was the Celestian and um, so much so that we've done a whole bunch of them to celebrate the success of that uh, patch and uh, again we've had a lot of fun with this added some kind of gaty stuff. I think we've applied the same processing to a set of Cretales. Is that how you pronounce it? I always get confused. says on the tin. and dark. Isolation was very kind of scary game. Shash and a gate. Shash is, you can't find it online, but it's a term that um, telephone engineers refer to a kind of a white or pink noise. Look at 
the simple pad. screen one. Great stuff. Let's see what else we've got. Finally, uh, we, I mean, it's not really kind of big, a part of the kind of big epic story, but um, we found some of these really kind of quite cool, so we thought we'd include them. Some plucky stuff. Good epic sonar, isn't there? these for kind of your scary vintage sound. And finally, the visitor. So, I'm probably, as you can hear, running out of steam, but I just wanted to return to my favourite as a little outro. Thanks for listening and see you next time.